Developing the right appetite on the next Good News program. The program you are about to watch is part of a free series we're making available to you as a gift from Greg Fritz Ministries entitled Transformed from the Inside Out. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s and stream the video for free by entering code FREE at checkout. Are you tired of hearing nothing but bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, I'm Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program. We are in the middle of a new series that I've entitled Transformed from the Inside Out. And I am really enjoying getting into these teachings and looking at scriptures and I've learned some new things and put some new things together. And I just think that, that this truth, that, that these truths will really be a blessing to you. We have these available in two different ways. We have the 15 sessions that we're doing on the program uh, available for free. You can go to our website to the free download section and you can get all 15 sessions either in MP3 audio or you can stream them on demand instantly to your device in video and audio. And so uh, I guess if we just did it in video without the audio it wouldn't be worth much. But uh, it's video audio streaming and you can go and get that. We also have a four message series that I put together and it's of the same title, Transform from the Inside Out. And this is available in CD or in MP3 downloads. And these, this is for purchase. So the, uh, the programs that we put together, you can have for free. And you can go to our free download section, get a lot of free things that way. But then there is the series that you can purchase if you prefer CDs or the MP3 and four messages, you can have it that way. Uh, we have had a, a big response on our Carefree Living series. There, there was people all over the world that downloaded that, that free uh, offer that we had, and it's still available if you'd like to go get that. Uh, what a wonderful response. I am so glad that people are connecting with the teaching. That means everything to me. Uh, that uh, that our teaching is helping people, and they are they're downloading these uh, these free items so they can have them uh, from now on and listen to them over and over again. So we're just thrilled about that. We also have the study notes available as usual. Uh, go to our study notes section, and you can download the study notes uh, of the uh, transformed. And when you put the study notes along with the free videos, you can have a Bible study, and some people are doing that. You can download study notes for everyone in the in the room and then they can watch you know 1 through 15 sessions or whatever the number is of that particular series and have a Bible study for 30 minutes and then have coffee and donuts or in my opinion chocolate cake would be an excellent way to finish out a Bible study of the Good News program all I ask is a tithe. If you could just send a tenth to the ministry, I would appreciate that. So let's get going in this, uh, in this lesson here. I've called it the right appetite. And uh, as by way of review, two important points that we've only made once is simply, number one, to live a Christian life, to be successful as a Christian, motive alone is not enough. Just because your motives are pure and you want to do right and you want to live for God, that by itself will not get you to the finish line. And I think this is an important point to, uh, to recognize. Number two, effort alone is not enough. Just because you're trying hard or you decide, I'm going to try harder, I'm going to live a better life, I'm going to live the life that God wants me to live, just because you give it your all doesn't mean that that is enough. In other words, the Christian life is not just the result of good motives and willpower. There is a, an essential ingredient that is necessary to empower us to do what God has called us to do, and it is the Word of God. I believe that most Christians, many Christians, are seriously malnourished when it comes to God's Word. They aren't getting enough of God's Word in their diet, in their spiritual diet. 
And one of the ways that we want to help that is to provide these programs, provide these series, provide the materials that we provide and the books that, that I'm writing. And that is to supplement your spiritual diet. You know, one service a week is not enough. One church service a week or two church services a week is not enough. We've got to have our own system of consuming God's Word on a regular basis. And that takes uh, some practice. But any any one of us can do this and can increase it. We had on this program what I call the Good News Challenge, where we challenge people to watch 20 episodes of this program in 30 days and tell us what happened. And we had some amazing testimonies because it really does make a difference when you get the Word of God in concentrated doses in your life. It'll do things for you that nothing else will do. So I shared with you the, the illustration of a man who was walking down the street and had had no strength to stand or to walk and the reason was because he he was so malnourished he was hungry he was starving for food and because he hadn't had a solid meal he had no strength and energy well to try and combat that problem of not being able to walk by telling him to walk chastising him condemning him encouraging him to walk would be futile and I think that's what some Christians are experiencing. They're trying their best to do what God wants them to do, to live the life they know they're supposed to live, and yet they don't seem to succeed because it's just willpower. It's, they're just trying to, to exercise mind over matter. They've failed and failed and failed, and they're just going to try harder not to fail. The missing ingredient, or the first place I would look, is their word intake. We would solve so many problems if we had a healthy diet of God's Word in our lives, that, that it's built into our lifestyle, our routine. And it's any one of us can do this. And I'm going to give you practical ways to do it. I'm going to tell you, you know, how, how I do it. I'll give you some of my, uh, my advice, my tips, and what I do in my life. And you can work the Word of God into your life in a greater way than ever before and experience the results that come from God's Word that don't come any other way. So I wanted to talk about developing the right appetite and because I've heard people say, you know, I just don't I just don't enjoy reading the Bible or I read the Bible and I don't really understand what I'm reading or I could read a novel all night or I could read a, a, a magazine all day long. But when I start to read the Bible, I go I go right to sleep. And they think that, you know, they're just there's just a disconnect between them and the word. They think somehow that they're unique and maybe they just aren't, don't have that kind of taste for the word and, and they would rather do other things. Well, anybody can develop an appetite for the word of God. It's something that can be developed if you will just put certain things in place. The illustration that I like to give along this line was a relative of mine that I lived with for a while. He, um, he was a smoker and he drank coffee and he told me one morning at breakfast, I had gotten up and gone down to breakfast and he was smoking a cigarette and drinking a cup of coffee and I was looking for food. And he said, you know, he said, if I had the choice, if you put a cigarette and a cup of coffee on this side of the table and if you put a full American breakfast on this side of the table and I had to choose one or the other and, and the, the breakfast being bacon and eggs and fruit and you know and toast and juice and all that he, he said if I had to choose between that and the cup of coffee and the cigarette he said I would choose the coffee and the cigarette every single morning and I'm not sure why he told me that other than I guess he was explaining to me why he was smoking early in the morning. And I, I, that would surprise me, but I didn't really know what to do with it. And years and years later, it's been 30, it's been over 30 years since that happened, but I never forgot that. And I began as, as we look at the word and people who really don't enjoy reading the word or don't want to spend time in the word. I believe that it's just an appetite that can be trained or retrained. You know, in, in my, my relative's uh, instance, 
he did not grow up or he wasn't born anyway drinking coffee and smoking cigarettes that's not how his mom raised him i knew his mom she didn't raise him he he was raised on milk just like every other toddler and if you had given him coffee when he was a little baby he would have spit it out and made a face and uh, anybody would the first time they've had it so what happened in his life that caused him to desire coffee and cigarettes more than a good breakfast. Well, he began to feed on coffee and cigarettes. He developed a taste for them and a, and a, and a, an addiction, really a chemical addiction, but it starts through through feeding on them. And, and as you look at that and, and realize that that really is true, that somebody could actually be so, you know, devoted to some chemical like that, that, that they would rather have that than actual food, then you, you understand you have tastes as a person and you can change your appetite. So if you're one of those that say, you know, I'd rather have I'd rather have somebody teach me the Bible. I'd rather I'd rather uh, read a book or another book, a good book. I'd rather do anything than read the Bible. I want to encourage you. You just need to feed on it. If, if somebody can develop a dependency on cigarette, cigarettes and coffee through experiencing that on a regular basis, the Word of God can become much more, we can become much more dependent on God's Word if we would feed on it. So I just want to encourage you, go to the Bible. Begin to read the Word. Begin to feed on the Word and just force yourself to do it at first if you have to. And realize it's not always going to be this way. When you start to change your appetite, it's not always going to be enjoyable at first. But as you do it and as you get more used to it, I promise you over time, you'll develop an appreciation for the Word of God that you never had before. You'll develop a dependency on the Word of God that you never had before. I mean, think about how people who, who drink coffee, how they are in the morning. They get out of bed. They don't want to talk to anybody. They don't want to see anybody. They don't want to think about anything. They are going straight for the coffee pot. Well, if you can do that for coffee, guess what? You can make the Word of God so desirable and you can develop such an appetite for God's Word that you make sure that if nothing else happens today, I'm going to get my Word. I'm going to get my full, you know, my full recommended daily allowance of God's Word in my life today because I'm going to find out, I'm going to find a way to get it. And boy, when you get to that point, then life changes for you. Then, you know, you're not just trying to read the Word because you're supposed to or because somebody expected you to or because I told you you need to, but you're doing it because that's what you want. And just a little bit of investment, just a little bit of time in this area will make a world of difference in your life. I quoted this author. He actually wrote Christ uh, the Healer, which is an excellent book. His name is F.F. F. Bosworth. And he said in his book, Christ the Healer, he said, uh, some Christians feed their bodies three hot meals a day and they feed their spirit two cold sm snacks a week. And then they wonder why they're weak in faith when it's obvious they have neglected their spiritual well-being. They've ignored the things of the Spirit. We're supposed to do just the opposite. We're supposed to set our affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For we are dead and our life is hid with Christ in God. That's uh, Colossians uh, 3.1. We need to understand that, that spending time in spiritual things benefits us in every area of life. It's not a waste of time to read the Word or spend time time in the Word. Now, I'm not saying that you should only do your own personal Bible reading. I'm just saying that ought to be a part of your devotional time. I believe programs like this, books that are out there, other preachers that are preaching the Word of God are called by God to help you grow, and you need that input as well. But it's just an overall appreciation for the Word of God. And if you're watching this program or you're listening, you have some understanding of what I'm talking about. People don't stumble onto the Good News program looking for some late night entertainment. You understand that you kind of, this is kind of a destination program. So you must have a desire for the Word or you wouldn't be here. But can I challenge 
challenge you to examine your appetites and see what's driving you and make sure that you give the Word of God its proper place in your life. Nothing else will do what God's Word will do for you. And so we need to make sure and maybe we need to change our appetite simply by cutting out some of the bad things. If you were going to change your appetite from cigarettes and coffee, and hopefully that's not your problem, but let's just say you were going to change your appetite from cigarettes and coffee to a healthy all-American breakfast, how would you do that? Well, the first thing you would do is start cutting back on the coffee and the cigarettes, and the second thing you would do is start feeding on the breakfast. So you stop eating the wrong things, start eating the right things, and eventually your entire your entire palate will change and you'll begin to desire those things in your life. I'll tell you, it works in the natural and it certainly works in the spiritual. And so don't, you know, don't don't be alarmed if if some of these things don't sound appealing to you. We, you know, depending on where we've been in the last five years and how busy we've been and how much we've had to how much attention we've had to pay to the world and to fulfill our obligations. Our, some, there are a lot of busy people and you're you're just working in the world all day long. And so spiritual th things may seem far away. But we can change the, the court, change the tide. We can reverse the trend, and you don't have to quit your job to do it. Anybody, any Christian, can be fully nourished on God's Word if you just make a few little changes in your routine. And it's not hard to do. We'll talk a lot about that as we go on. But I want to give you some scriptures about God's Word. Job said this in Job 23, 12. He says, I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Isn't that powerful? Here's a guy who loved God's Word. He said, I love His Word more than I love food. Well, a lot of us may not be able to say that outright, but Job said it, and it's something that we need to think about. It's something that we need to, uh, uh, you know, we need to strive for. We need to try for that, and the way to do it is to feed on it is to feed on the Word. You know, I've noticed when I'm fasting, when I'm going without food, uh, that the Word of God is even more precious during those times. You'd think, well, all you'd want is food, and you do want food when you fast. But the Word of God begins to fill that void, and it begins to speak even louder and become even more precious. And Job said, I, I would rather have the Word. Boy, that's, that's a step above my relative, isn't it? <laughs> Job was saying, if I had the Word of God on this side, and I had breakfast on this side, I'd choose the Word every time. That's, that's really the way to live life, isn't it? When you begin to desire the Word like that, nothing is going to stop you from getting into God's Word and getting God's Word into you, and you're going to see the difference in your life. You, fruit, the fruit of that experience on a daily basis will be seen by everyone around you. And, and it's not that hard. It's not a matter of trying harder to be better. It's a matter of feeding on the right thing and letting this fruit, this, the, the things that are on the inside of you, grow and develop to the outside. Isn't that a great process? Isn't that a wonderful thought that you that growing is natural? It's not it's not effort the way we think of it. You don't go to the gym and work out in order to grow taller. I mean your muscles grow, but as far as your stature, that's something that happens as you as you eat and as you live, you grow. And and spiritual growth is the same way. You put on the new man, you're transformed from the inside out. But the most important ingredient in this process is the Word of God. If you're trying to be a Christian without God's Word, you're going to come up short. Nobody can do it without the Word. Nobody can bypass this, this process because it's built in. It's, it's supposed to be this way. We're supposed to desire His Word. Jesus said in Matthew 4.4, 4, Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So God's word is like food. And he said, just like you can't live day to day without bread, without physical food, you can't live without spiritual food. You can't live without the Word of God. And I just think that's exciting. Uh, Psalm 119 verse 162 says this way. The psalmist said, I rejoice at your word 
as one who finds great treasure. Isn't that a beautiful picture? He said, when I find your word and I look at your word, I rejoice like I've found great treasure. And if you don't have that experience, just spend some time in the word. None of, none of the, what I'm saying is to cause condemnation or guilt whatsoever. We all live in this world. And listen, we all have times where the things of God grow strangely dim and the spiritual side of life seems far away. And God's word is not as rich and full and warm as, as it once was. There are times you go through that, but we can get back to that and, and we can get the word back in its proper place in our lives and as you do that all these other things will fall into line with it this is what turns the tide this is what causes this chain reaction as you feed on God's Word you are transformed from the inside out that changes your thinking it changes your actions it changes your ability it changes your life now, obviously, you were changed when you got born again. You were completely changed on the inside. But as you feed on God's Word, then you, you complete this transformation on the outside. You can uh, become aware of your own personal word intake. And I think this is an important, uh, an important point to make. We as Christians need to be aware of our word intake. In other words, not everything that's that's uh, labeled Christian is full of the Word of God. And this isn't a this isn't a criticism. It's just a fact that not every Christian book or Christian song is full of God's Word, and that's fine. I just think we need to know when we're getting the Word and when we're not. We need to develop a sensitivity that will come as you feed on the Word. To know that, you know what, that's Christian, but it was written to mainly to inform me, not to feed me. There are many Christian uh, programs and there are Christian writings that were written to inform, to, to help you understand what's going on in the world or whatever. But it's those word-based uh, materials that will feed you. And there's a difference. I, I believe this program will feed you. I want it to be that way. You see, I, I can't entertain you. That's not what I do. That's not really my, my, my uh, expertise to entertain. And I really can't inform you just to tell you a bunch of facts and, and give you a lot of principles about psychiatry or marriage or family or whatever other Christian. There, there are other Christians that do that and they're skilled in that. And they're trained in that. I want to feed you. And as a teacher, I do this all the time, as a teacher in the body of Christ, as one of the fivefold ministry gifts, I go to churches, I go to Bible schools, and really, I mean, I feel just like Paul sometimes when in 1 Corinthians 3, he said, I wanted to bring you meat, but I could only bring you milk because you can't bear it. You, you go into these situations as a teacher and you, and you try to give them as much word as they can take. And you, you may have to dress it up with, with stories and, and and jokes and, and different things to make it easier and, and, and water it down somewhat. And you know, that's what Paul was talking about. There's a difference between milk and meat. But as a teacher, we're trying to give people as much solid food as we can because that's what's going to help them. You know, I had my book. I took it, uh, Living With No Regrets, I took it to a show uh, to be interviewed. And we promoted the book. And I interviewed with this lady. Her name was Dr. Frida Cruz. She had me on her program. And she was talking about my book and asking questions. And she, she said, your book has more scripture in it than any book I've read lately. She said, I don't know how you got so many scriptures in your book. And I took that as a compliment. I'm not sure she meant it as one. I think she did. But I took it as a compliment because it's not my opinion that's going to help you. It's not my opinion that's going to feed you. It's not my opinions or my stories really that are going to change your life. It's how I can integrate the scriptures into my teaching. And the word of God has, the, the word has within it the ingredients. It has within it the spirit, the power, the nourishment that you need to change your life. And I can't produce that. So I get it from the Bible and turn it into teaching and interweave it with my illustrations and whatever, my delivery. But hopefully you're getting a lot of word when you hear this program or when you read my book because that's what's going to stick with you and that's what's going to change your life. 
So uh, here, here's uh, this scripture that I quoted. It's Deuteronomy 8, 3. In the Old Testament, Jesus was quoting this, and he said it in Matthew 4, 4. But it's man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. So it's a it's it's such an important part of our spiritual journey. You just can't do it without it. And uh, and so I wanted to talk to you about changing your appetite, because the, the truth of the matter is we're not reading the Bible to please God or to try and serve God or because it's our Christian duty. It's food. I mean, we want the word. We see what the word does for us and in us. And so that's why we read. Once you make that change change where you're not reading the word or listening to programs or teaching to, to, to fulfill some Christian duty, but you're doing it because you get something out of it, then you're on your way to addiction. And man, it's the right kind of addiction. One of the great things about being addicted to God's word is you can never overdose. You'll never go too far in the word of God. You'll never get too much of God's word. Isn't that great? Well, I'm going to bring this teaching to a close. I'm so glad you're out there. You know, we know that there are many, many viewers out there, and it just thrills my heart to know that. Uh, the fact that you're watching means you're getting something from this program. And when I began this program, I did it purely by faith. I didn't know who was going to watch, if anybody was going to watch, but we know you're out there. I love getting your emails. I love seeing you come and download the, the free stuff. We love to hear from you. Thank you for your response. Thank you for being part of this Good News audience. You mean the world to me, and uh, I am going to continue to bring this teaching to you. We've got some exciting things to cover in the ne next few weeks, and I'm already planning for next year. So uh, just, just know that you're in our hearts and prayers all the time. And I'm constantly gathering material just for you because I believe God put me here to help you live your one life for Him. Amen. Well, God bless you today. And until next time, may God's best be yours. In these teachings, you will receive practical advice on how to feed on God's Word and integrate it into your busy lifestyle. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s and stream the video for free by entering code FREE at checkout. If you would like to say a big hearty amen uh, to this teaching, if you've enjoyed it and you want to let me know you're out there, go to my um, YouTube channel and subscribe. Be a subscriber. So even if you don't watch YouTube, you can subscribe and it'll help our numbers. Go to my Facebook page and follow me on Facebook and join our Good News group. and It'll give us a new way to connect with you throughout the week. I got Greg Fritz's Good News book and Living With No Regrets. When I looked at this, I thought, you know, God wants us to know how much He loves us. He wants to show us His love constantly. And what better news is that? You can have joy unspeakable and full of glory. And when I heard Mr. Fritz talk, it was like he was talking to me. Um, I just knew there was stuff that the Lord wanted me to let go of and deal with. We need to find new ways to get the Word into our life. We ought to find ways to put it on our devices. We need to read it. We need to keep it before our eyes. We need to meditate on it. These things are, are the things that will change your life. GregFritz.org offers many free resources on a variety of topics, such as how to let go of your past, live worry-free, hear God's voice clearly, and receive God's best in your life. Visit GregFritz.org to download free teachings that will change your life today. Greg Fritz has been changing lives through the good news of the gospel for over 35 years. This good news will inspire, inform, and change you so you can live daily in all the promises of God.